again and welcome back to That's English. Hi. Ashley, why are you wearing an apron? Well, I've been helping out a friend who has an all-night bar because a lot of his staff were ill. Oh, so what hours did you work? From 10 o'clock in the evening until 6 o'clock this morning. Wow, you must be exhausted. I am. Oh, I wouldn't like to work night shifts. You go to bed when everyone is getting up. Mm. I suppose you get used to it. Lots of people have to do it. Think of the police, the fire services, the hospitals. Well, that's true. We all depend on night workers. Mm. Well, today's documentary is about a particular type of work, which involves long shifts, day and night, but also long periods away from home. Yes, it's about a day in the life of a cruise ship worker. Oh, it must be very hard working long hours and not going home for months. Yes, but there are good things about that lifestyle too, as we'll see now in our documentary. As you watch, try to answer this question. When did John's working day start and finish? Hmm, let's see. Rush hour. Traffic jams and crowded buses and trains. For most people, this is the start of the working day. But for night shift workers, this is the end of their working day. People like nurses, police officers and firefighters have a very different lifestyle. They go to bed when most people get up. Then they get up when everyone else comes home from work. It isn't easy for the families of night shift workers. But what happens when the worker not only works at night, but is also miles and miles away from home? We spoke to theatre manager John Plews, who used to work on a cruise ship. Well, when I first went to sea, I started off as a DJ and then a comedian, and eventually became a cruise director, which meant that I looked after the entertainment programme on board of the ship, which included everything from bingo to variety shows. With this kind of lifestyle comes both positive and negative aspects. We'd start around about 8 a.m. and we wouldn't finish till 3 o'clock the next morning when the last show finished. But to compensate for that, we had two months off when life was just a great pleasure. The days at sea were very tiring, but I really enjoyed the job. John met his future wife Katie on a cruise ship. Katie was working as a croupier in the ship's casino. But she didn't stay at sea for long. She went back to working in a casino in London. And we met up regularly uh, in some really lovely places. But the biggest problem was phoning him. Yes, it was really exciting. I mean, I was going to lots of exotic places, meeting lots of different people, meeting famous people at some times. And then I could come home and tell all my friends where I'd been and who I'd met. But the main bad thing about being at sea was the lack of communication. We didn't have mobile phones in those days. So every time the ship got to dock, if I wanted to talk to my family or my girlfriend, I had to queue up at a, at a payphone. John and Katie lived together on the cruise ship for almost six years. We got married after being together three and a half years. And John gave up cruise ships just before our first child was born. People choose this kind of lifestyle for many different reasons. I think a few people go to sea because they want to escape, but most people go to sea for the travel, to visit exotic places, to be on the other side of the world and know that you're getting paid. So a lot of people save all their money and come home and start a family. Ultimately, many of the people who have an unusual lifestyle do so from necessity. But there are also some, like John, who enjoy it. Of course, it helps if they have a partner who has an unusual working day too. They are the lucky ones. It's true that thanks to mobile phones, we can now communicate with friends and family when we want. So we forget that it wasn't always like that. All that time at sea without a phone. Terrible. But all those exotic places sound fantastic. Yes. Now, let's look at the answer to our documentary question. When did John's working day start and finish? 
Let's just see it again. With this kind of lifestyle comes both positive and negative aspects. We'd start around about 8 a.m. and we wouldn't finish till 3 o'clock the next morning when the last show finished. So the answer is John's working day started at 8 a.m. and finished at 3 a.m. the next morning. That's a really long working day. Most people want to travel, visit exotic places and save money. Yes, they can save a lot because they don't spend anything while they're at sea. But it's not easy to have a relationship when you're far from your partner. Has that ever happened to you, Ashley? Yes. When I was living in the south of England, I once had a girlfriend who lived in Scotland. Oh, and how long did that last? Mm, only three months. The train tickets were too expensive. Oh, that's a pity. But there are lots of different kinds of relationships these days. Yes, and there are lots of different kinds of families too, like single parent families or gay marriages. We asked our international friends this question. How well accepted are different types of family structures in your country? Let's have a look. Although New Zealand is quite traditional in its customs, we do accept gay marriages. Uh, inside of uh, the cities, um, then most family units are accepted just for what they are, be they gay couples or um, single parent families. Um, but once you get out into the rural areas, perhaps there's less understanding and less acceptance because people aren't so familiar. I believe all different types of family units are very well accepted in the UK. Family units in Jamaica have always been a very fluid thing in that there have always been aunts and uncles and grannies looking after children. So the normal family unit as we know it has always been a very uh, fluid thing. Blended families, divorced families are becoming more and more common, so they are being more accepted. In Scotland, we've got all different types of family units, um, from single parents to um, gay marriages, um, and I would say it's all very accepted. I think most to all types of family units seem to be pretty much accepted in Australia now. Oh, I learned a new expression from the Canadian lady, blended families. Yes, that's when a family includes children from a partner's previous relationship. Oh, right. It was also fascinating to see how same-sex marriage is becoming accepted in more and more countries. Mm. Fortunately, people seem to be more open-minded nowadays. Very true. Now it's time for today's episode of That's Britain. Nigel goes to the South Downs National Park. Oh, a beautiful natural area where people come to walk and enjoy the countryside. He talks to some different people who love the park. We'd like you to answer this question. What does Claire like about life in the National Park? Great, let's find out. Hello! My goodness, that was hard work. Today, I'm in the countryside, in the South Downs National Park. Take a look at that view. Isn't it fantastic? The South Downs National Park covers about 1,000 square miles, from Winchester to Eastbourne on the coast. This is Ditchling Beacon. It's very popular with all sorts of people, but it's definitely popular with those who are serious about having a healthy lifestyle. Many people come here to cycle and to walk. As you can see, paragliding is also a very popular activity here. I'm here with Matt, who's been paragliding for five years now. 
Matt, what's so good about it? It's great. The views are lovely. It's really relaxing and you can just sit up there and forget your worries. Thank you. <laughs> I've mentioned that this place is called Ditchling Beacon, but what exactly is a beacon? It's a huge fire built on a hill used to send messages. In 1588, the beacon was lit to tell Queen Elizabeth I that the Spanish Armada was coming. Of course, the South Downs are not just for tourists and people having fun. A lot of people actually live and work here. And one of them is Claire. Claire, what's it like living and working in the National Park? It's lovely. It's a very beautiful place to live. Um, there's lots of clean air, beautiful buildings around us, lots of lovely walks to go on. Great. Thanks very much. Well, let's take a look at some more interesting and beautiful places on the South Downs. What activities are there to do here? Uh, walking, mainly, uh, admiring the views, and as you can see today, uh, looking at the uh, hang gliders, who uh, are pretty impressive. Yes, they're brave, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. It's a pleasure. This is the most famous beauty spot in this area. It's Beachy Head and it's been used in many films, including Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and the James Bond movie, The Living Daylights. Well, that's all we have time for. Next time, I'm going to a place near Chichester, and we'll find out how people used to live and see the houses they lived in. See you there. What a lovely place to go paragliding. Oh, no, thank you. Just nice long walks for me. Well, you can do both exciting and relaxing things there. <laughs> it would be a lovely place to live. Yes, Claire certainly likes living there. And our question was about that. What does Claire like about life in the National Park? Shall we see it again? Good idea. Claire, what's it like living and working in the National Park? It's lovely. It's a very beautiful place to live. Um, there's lots of clean air, beautiful buildings around us, lots of lovely walks to go on. So the answer is, Claire likes the beautiful place and buildings, the clean air and the lovely walks. It really is a wonderful area. And they filmed that James Bond movie near there. He's my hero. <laughs> I thought your hero was Harry Potter, Ashley. Well, that's the end of today's programme. We look forward to seeing you soon for the next That's English. Goodbye. Yes, goodbye. <laughs>